I mean, you look at what happened with all the Monsanto litigation about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. They had to release this whole thing called the Monsanto Papers. They were declassified. Where they ghost writ scientific, they ghost wrote scientific papers saying that glyphosate is safe. So there's all this corruption in there where basically we have 10,000 unregulated chemicals in our food system and we're getting sick as hell, obviously. And then you've got the evidence-based people saying, well, we need to have a 10-year longitudinal study to show that glyphosate is causing XYZ disease. And it's like, obviously, that's not the right approach. Because first of all, it is the synergistic combination Mm. of all the toxins that are now in our environment that are leading to all these pleiotropic health issues. That's very hard to study. So we have to get our heads out of our ass and use our common sense and realize what's going on and 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 not wait 10 years with these, you know, NIH funded studies that are going to be corrupted. And, you know, I think so that's just that's just one thing about the food chemicals. I, I just wanted to add to your point, Cal, like um, some other dates like you look at the the processed food emergence. Processed food like really didn't start taking off until these mergers. Like it's there was a little bit of a start of it. Proce- Ultra processed foods did not exist before World War II. We and you know we needed to have shelf stable food for soldiers and things like that that we could ship. And so there were maybe some good intentions there. But then it got ex- there was an opportunity there that got seen. Um, and we can also you know weaponize the feminist movement against you know oh. Being in the kitchen, you're a slave. You know, you, you don't that your value is outside the home. You need to climb the corporate ladder. Here, have this convenience food that we basically made for soldiers, and we're going to tell you that this is actually your liberation. Mm. So, of course, we got people not, not cooking. Families kids, aren't yeah. families aren't eating together anymore. Like, um, you know, kids are eating. Sixty-seven percent of children's calories now are ultra processed foods. These means foods that come from a factory made by food scientists, not just processed, ultra processed. The, the highest form of processing, 67% of calories. Then you go to the 1970s and you we have the advent of high fructose corn syrup, which as Callie talks about, this preceded some of the mergers, but high fructose corn syrup is a weapon, weapon of mass destruction that basically food scientists used an understanding about hibernating animals like bears who... Fructose is one of the only types of calories where instead of making you feel satiated, it makes you more hungry. And this is evolutionarily. And we knew this. In the fall, when animals are preparing for hibernation and they start eating fructose-rich berries, they need to put on a ton of fat for winter. And so there's a feed-forward mechanism with fructose where it actually gets the bears to be hungry and even violent to outcompete other animals to get as many berries as possible in a short period of time to lay 3D print fat for winter. So you so you have the scientists understanding this and say, hey, we can make liquid fructose a thousand times more potent than the fructose you'd find in berries. Same molecule, but in higher concentration. And we can add it to everything. We can add it to salad dressing. We're going to add it to ketchup. We're going to add it to children's school lunches. We're going to add it obviously to sodas and we're going to make people insatiable we're going to make their bodies and their brains think that they're preparing for winter that's never coming it's it's really interesting there's two amazing books on this um richard johnson from university of colorado wrote nature wants us to be fat and then david perlmutter wrote um, drop acid both books are about a molecule called uric acid which is unique to fructose metabolism so when fructose is metabolized in the body not like glucose it creates uric acid which creates oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction in the brain and the body that if you have mitochondrial dysfunction, you're not going to be able to process sugars to energy, you know, mitochondria powerhouse of the cell. So you break the mitochondria with the excess fructose overloading the mitochondria with uric acid. And then what happens? You can't turn sugars to energy. So what do you do? You turn sugars to fat. So you start 3D printing fat. You start 3D printing fat because you break the mitochondria with excess fructose. Um, and on top of that, the mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress when happening in the brain is what may inspire the violence and the ADHD and all that stuff to make the bears manic so they get as much berries as possible. This is what's happening in every kid in every classroom in America now. Um, and so that's kind of some of the biology very simply about, about what's happening. But this is the thing about fruit is that we have 40 trillion cells and we have the ability to clear uric acid and we have the ability to process fructose in a physiologic amount. We're never going to have the uric acid increasing and overloading the mitochondria if we're eating an apple. It's when you're eating 20, 30 times the fructose that an apple has and you're 
Drinking literally it. pouring it down that all of a sudden Starbucks. imagine you get this huge rise in uric acid in the body and other things that are happening and uh and that's when it overwhelms so it's 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 a bit of that dose makes the poison because our body has the ability to excrete toxins our body has the ability to deal with some heavy metals our body has the ability to probably clear some level of glyphosate but we can't clear all of it all the time 24 hours a day